I want to start this morning by welcoming you all here to this wonderful college in Port Leash for yet another gathering of teachers, SESI members, people interested in education who are here on a Saturday morning in the middle of the school term because of their belief in what technology can bring to education and to that educational experience. I apologise for the, the late start and for that very reason I'm certainly not going to continue at any great length at this stage. The title for our conference is ICT Changing Landscape and I think the biggest change in the landscape is that we are all here today with money in our school coffers which has, been, it has got to be unique. But it also gives us an opportunity not only to invest and to look at what we might purchase but to see what we should be doing with it. And definitely what's on offer today will cause you to think, to wonder, and I hope to adapt and take home some of those ideas to use in your classroom. And perhaps next year, wherever we are for our conference, our gathering together, we can look at what those monies have meant and have they translated into changes in how we do things in the classroom. I would like at this point in time just to thank Claire Dunning because she's principal here and due to her good offices we have the use of the college here today and all her staff who have been wonderfully helpful in doing everything. And so to open us and get us started, could I at this point in time invite Anna Keefe, CEO of the Leach VEC, to open our conference. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Chairman Adrian, ladies and gentlemen, um, I must say I was very impressed when uh, silence was called. You were the obedient class that uh, we all look and hope for. It gives me great pleasure indeed to open this uh, annual conference of the Computer Education Society of Ireland for the second time and to welcome you once again on your return visit to Port Leisha College. It is very heartening for us that you find this college to be a suitable venue for your deliberations, and County Leach VEC is very, very happy to facilitate you. At this juncture, uh, I want to reiterate um, the thank yous that um, Adrienne made uh, to express my gratitude to the college principal, Colette Dunning, and to the deputy principal, Mr. Noel Daly, Mr. Colin Boyle, our IT officer, and uh, Mr. David Calvert, our caretaker, for their most helpful cooperation in ensuring that all your requirements will be met this weekend in the college anyway. The theme for this year's conference is ICT in Education, Changing Landscapes. And what an appropriate theme you've chosen. In education, the landscape will always, and indeed should always, be changing. However, the challenges of the current economic climate affect the landscape of the Irish education system in a manner probably never experienced previously. Since 1973, when CESI was founded, there has been a gradual but nonetheless upward graph of progress being made in the Irish education system. Very much of that progress was enabled through the development of information technology, and your society contributed in many ways to that progress. Now we are in a very different climate. Cost issues and the requirement of value for money seem to dominate at all levels of decision making. However, the government's strategy to make technology an integral part of the learning process is a very positive and welcome development for the education sector. The high-tech equipment grants allocated to all post-primary schools in 2010 will significantly enhance the ICT infrastructure, thereby supporting new syllabi, such as Project Maths. I have no doubt, nor I feel certain do you, that the developments of information technology will always be great value for money and will be key to an integrated approach to teaching and learning that will shape the future for all. Your website, www.csi.ie, provides ample evidence of this, and your advice and your archive of Digitech articles shows what a contribution your society is making. Since I first learned of your society, and I think I noted this last year, I was extremely impressed that your membership is open to primary, post-primary and third level teachers. I wonder, are, are, are you the only such society or organisation in the country? 
I congratulate you on this and the fact that your society is driven by practitioners, for practitioners. The programme for your conference is truly rich and varied. Among the topics being covered are virtual learning environments in the classroom, digital storytelling, post-primary maths, the interactive whiteboard, and a most intriguing topic, cloud computing for communication. I think this was referred to, in fact, it was referred to last night on Vincent Brown, and none of the panel knew what it was about. However, it was when I saw a reference to using Google Apps in education that I decided I needed to have an urgent chat with our IT officer, Colin, Colin Boyle. Um, you know, if you think about our emerging, the emerging economies, the, the crib countries as they call them, um, Russia, China, India, and Brazil, they are quite advanced in IT and IT development, and a lot of their business are based on IT and IT development and work in, in, in virtual ways um, right across the board. Um, we can run many businesses from our own home, and a lot of our very successful multi-million pound businesses and multi-million euro businesses are being run in that way. So you are at the coalface and you are in the right place. I wish you well in your deliberations. May you have the benefits of the exchange and knowledge uh, and indeed information, but equally may you enjoy the friendships, um, the old friendships, and perhaps begin new ones. Um, I now declare this conference open. Thank you very much, Anne, for those words. And without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Tom Barrett. Let his actions do the speaking. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, wow, it's just so exciting to be here. And, you know, I'd uh, just like to just introduce myself to those people who don't know very much about me. Um, I'm a year five, six teacher from a primary school in Nottinghamshire. I'm also a deputy head teacher. And um, I'm really here today just to I want to share with you some really practical things that are going on in my classrooms, have been over the last five years, um, and to be talking to you also about the things that we, we do as a group, as a community, to start talking to you about how important networks are and how technology is bringing us together to kind of create new things. So um, I'm also a deputy head, so you know my, my time is pretty constrained, and I've had a full teaching week this week. In fact, I was teaching all of yesterday, and you know jumped on a flight here um, yesterday evening. So it's it's um, I, I kind of understand how busy our lives are, and I just want hopefully today you can take away a few nuggets, a few a few sort of simple ideas that you might be able to build upon. So my um, my presentation today really kind of has two, sort of two main parts, and the first part really is coming from my experience as a teacher and the kind of practical things that I've, I've sort of learned over the last sort of maybe 10 years to do with technology in the classroom. And um, I'm going to start with, uh, with a picture, and what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think of a, a word, um, uh, I think I'm almost giving the game away, I think, so uh, I'd like you to have a look at this picture and I'd like you to think about um, this in terms of uh, how important it is, in terms of the, the message it's kind of providing. If you have a look, we've got a whole range of different things going on in this picture. This is a picture I took about um, four years ago when I was working at a previous school. And it, it's always resonated really strongly with me because it's the way I like to see technology being used in the classroom. And if you just took a moment just to reflect upon what sort of um, word or what sort of approach you think it kind of encapsulates, um, you know, it, it kind of has a lot of a kind of a myriad of things going on here, and it and it's something that I try to uh, to reach with my classes, or something I try to reach with my school and the people that I work with, because it is something about blending a, a range of approaches, and um, I think that's what um, I'm, you know, I think that's what we're trying to kind of get across. It is the sense that it's not just about technology for technology's sake. It's it's about bringing a whole range of ideas together. So, from you know, from a practical point of view, I'm not just using you know computers. I'm using all our traditional resources we have in the classroom, and it's a blend of all of those different approaches. I think this is the best word to describe the approach I like to take to do with technology, especially in the primary classroom, where so much is going on. It's such a busy place, and I think it's really important that we try to 
find the best of different approaches so that all learners are included and it is something that we're able to kind of we can flex easily um, so that picture for me just sort of sums up really nicely and in fact one of the, the one of the things that I did I wrote a blog post I'm just going to We'll break away from the microphone a little bit. So, um, one of the things I did with this is that uh, I, I wrote a blog post about this picture and I called it um, Mr. Barrett. I've got blue on my laptop. And, uh, and that whole idea, and, and I kind of like, that's, that's, that's okay, you know, we're celebrating the fact that, well done, you've got blue on your laptop. Don't worry, those things aren't stuck to the laptop, in fact. Um, it's, but it, that whole idea of, um, you know, the, the kind of combination of resources, I think that's kind of important. And for me, this, this picture is always been quite strong in, in terms of the way I approach technology in my classroom and like I say in, in the other classrooms that I can try and work, work with. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to talk about some other things that I could do with the way I approach technology. Um, one of them, blended approach, the blended approach to it. Another is that's really important is, is access and the sort of sense of access that we have towards Technology. Now, what I'm talking about here is not just your physical resources, the way that you lay out your classroom, not just the way that the children can access different things in the classroom freely and without a problem, but um, I'm also thinking here about digital content. And last night I, I managed to kind of catch um, the last part of the, the SESI meet at the hotel and, and some of the, 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 the kind of material that's printed, there were some, some codes on it. And um, the, these things are called QR codes. I'm just going to move over. These are, these are QR codes. QR codes, which you haven't seen, um, are called are basically quick response codes. And the whole idea here is that we, we take a website or we, we take some content and we can go to a, um, a, a, web, go to a, a site that allows us to make these codes. Okay? So each one of these, for me, is a website. I basically put a URL or a website in and I've created these. These are all pictures. That I can print off. And this, this has made a massive difference the way we kind of use technology, access technology in the classroom. Because what we do is we take the printed code and we just show it to our little network that we've got. And the webcam reads it because we've got a little bit of software on it. Um, and it reads that code and it basically loads up the website straight away. So, in fact, there isn't an issue where children are typing things in and even. So I might just go back then. Um, so the, the idea, basically what we've got here is the sense that um, I can provide children a, a shortened a, a web address to get to a website. And that's what I want them to do after all. I want them to get to the website, to the content, to get going with it. Whether that's an extension in maths, or it's a, a little spelling activity. Basically, I'm not really worried too much when I'm applying technology to do, so I'm not really worried about the process. I want them to get to the content after all. So shortened web addresses were great. So I could, I could shorten a long web address, I could give them these bunch of letters, but we still have problems. There's still children who find that difficult. There's still children who need support in order to do that. Even right up the I, mean, I work with the oldest, the oldest children in school, and they still find that difficult to type in a, a short web address. So what happened was I started using these, I started getting the kids to I print off a bunch of codes and they show it and away they go. And I did this with everybody in my class and we had no problems. I didn't need to support anybody. I didn't get Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett, yeah, just a minute, yeah, just a minute, you know. And that whole thing where you feel that you're suddenly within the space of a moment, something seems so easy like getting to a website becomes a problem and within the space of a few minutes, you've kind of lost everybody because you've got five, five minutes where you're trying to sort something out. So this, for me, is, is something that some people kind of think technology is, is a, it's a kind of solution waiting for um, sort of a problem. And this one, it was a problem. Getting children to sites, there was a, so, so using QR codes has been really, really valuable. Now, I want you to imagine then that you've got a little, like a Rolodex in the early years. Okay? And you've got your QR code which you've made, and on the other side, or next to it, you've got a picture of that website. So for those younger children, they can choose, they have that independence. They don't necessarily need to read anything, they can look at a picture of the website which is their favourite, and they can pick and choose it, show it to the, QR, to the, to the reader, and that might be a webcam, or a, or a webcam inside the network, and away they go. 
And that's happening now in, my, in, in our foundation class in perception. And, uh, and children who find it very difficult to communicate are able to independently access different web resources. And uh, we're finding that this is a really, really useful way of using QR codes. Often what people think is they, they say they use their mobile phones. And I'll ask them, I've got something next where you could actually use it. If you've got a smartphone, you could read these. But this is different. This is us taking the code to the computer rather than taking the device to the code. Okay? This is that switching it on its head a little bit. And in fact, if you've got a, um, if you've got a smartphone or something, then this, this code, you should be able to read it from, from your phone. And uh, if, you, if you've got that, then this will take you to a, um, a blog post I did showing some children using, um, using QR codes in my classroom. It shows the children. It's a video of the children actually doing it. Just uh, stick your hand up in the air if you've managed it. There we go. We've got one. That'll do. <laughs> so you, you've got the, your little um, barcode scanner on there. Awesome. Okay, it's working. So, okay, we've got some people. So it does work. So, um, so this is a simple, this is like the tradition of what people think. The mobile use of QR codes is often the idea where you just, you know, you go and it's on a display or it's somewhere around school and you can hold up your camera, hold up your iPod touch even with the, the new ones with the cameras and you can read something and it can take you to something like a video. Okay? So imagine using these in your school, put them in, put them in displays and maybe send the children around to show a video, it might link to a film, it might link to a, a piece of uh, content on the web. This one, like I said, takes you to a, a blog post, okay? And that blog post will show you our children using it in the classroom. The old Wi-Fi is going to get hammered now. Woo! <laughs> okay, uh, um, I'm going I'm to press on. I'm going to give you a few minutes to see some cameras being held up, and some people are going to be very disappointed when I click on the next button, I can see. <laughs> okay, so access is important. Access to digital resources, access to physical resources. The other idea, obviously, the other thing that's important is access to uh, our you know, devices. Um, in my classroom, I've got a big cabinet for netbooks, and that's something that is permanently placed. I'm always going to stand in front of a staff and say, put netbooks and laptops permanently, permanently in your classroom, because that is just going to change the dynamic it's going to change the feeling of ownership over technology. Children are going to feel different about having the networks right there when they need them, whenever they need them. And whether that's in your department, in your school, or in your own classroom, if you can ever get to that stage, I think it's really important. So we bought a cabinet for 30 machines, but we only bought 15 because we knew that we were perhaps going to expand. And I think it's important that you give children access within their own space. That's thinking about access in terms of environment, the environment we're working in as well. Okay, so access and the whole blended approach. Oh, look, a squirrel! Um, now, uh, I can't quite see it like that, that well on there, but um, oh, look, a squirrel. Now, why? Now, you can, it's like slide seven, and I'm already showing sort of small furry animals, and so it's obviously, it's been a long half term. Uh, why am I showing this? I think this is uh, something that the approach to technology can often be a bit like this. Oh, look a squirrel. We kind of, um, we, we tend to go, we sometimes go, especially when talking here about web tools that we use, it can often be, I'm looking at this one, oh, that's an interesting one, and that's a shiny new tool, I'm going to try that. Oh, that's a shiny interesting thing, I'm going to try that website. And it's kind of like, okay, we've kind of done five things, and, and we also, if we think about asking children to do those things, we might be able to cope with it quite well, but asking children to kind of switch between different types of tools can sometimes be difficult for them. And so I want you, know, you to think about the idea that, oh, look, a squirrel. Well, maybe I, it's okay to kind of find out and learn about these different things. But what I'd like you to do is to think about how we can perhaps narrow our focus a little bit. Because there is a massive breadth of different tools on the web. And I'm speaking specifically about web tools here. There's a massive breadth. And what we perhaps need to do sometimes is just narrow our focus and start to do some of these things on here. You need to think about finding your cornerstones. Now, your cornerstones are those applications that you use that you basically keep going back to and you build everything else around. Some of them that I felt, I found, is uh, things like VoiceThread. Have you had a few use VoiceThread in the classroom? Yeah. Okay, a few people. 
okay? Um, VoiceThread is, uh, is a tool that allows me to put a picture up. So I can put a picture on, I can share it with everybody in my class, and at exactly the same time, everybody can comment, either through using their voice or through typing, and they can annotate on the picture as well. And that can happen at exactly the same time. So all of my class, using a network or sharing it one between two, can access either video, they can access pictures, or even you know, text as well. So they can comment on you know, media in different ways. VoiceThread, and I wasn't going to talk too much about it, but VoiceThread, if you haven't heard about that, then please make sure you have a look. It is one of my cornerstones. It's the one thing that I come, keep coming back to. It's not something I've just used once. It's something I've tried to use lots and lots of times. Because when I do that, when I do that, it builds that sense of proficiency. It builds that sense of the, the, the children feeling accustomed to what they're doing. We're not just going, well, this is lovely and shiny, we're going to use it this week, but we might never ever use it again, children. Okay? It, it, what we're doing here is we're kind of getting children accustomed to it. And as I've said on there, I want to dispel the novelty of things like that. I don't want it to be, I don't want to have one session where we're all really, really excited. I want children to kind of get beyond that. I want children to use these tools to really impact on their own learning. And that's the kind of crucial thing. And by the way, just try and ignore the thrill. Most of the time, if you can, just ignore the thrill. So those are some of the things I want you to think about. The whole sense of thinking, cornerstones. Mine is VoiceThread, probably Google Apps as well, part of the Google, Google Docs and things. And I know there's a couple of workshops today that talk about Google Apps in the classroom. So if you get an opportunity, that's one of mine. So VoiceThread, Google Apps, uh, and maybe a couple of others. What are you going to concentrate? What are you going to narrow your focus on? What are you going to spend more time on? <coughs> now, <coughs> this is kind of a given, okay? This is a given, but I'm not talking about kind of engage. I'm not talking about that sort of engage. I'm talking about um, engaging our children in, you know, in the most, uh, in the most, you know, the widest ways that we can. I think it's really important. One of the things that I've done um, in terms of engaging children is talking about games-based learning. So game-based learning is, is a sense of uh, using kind of computer games at home, using consoles, using that sort of content that's generated from there and using it within the classroom. Because after all, I think this is a truth that I've learned over the last few years, and this is something I've, become, I've, got, you know, I've suddenly realised, that as a teacher, if I'm going to stand up and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try and inspire my kids, and I'm going to try and engage my kids, I need to feel inspired as well. You know, it's hard. It's hard to keep the motivation going. It's hard when the days are dark and you want to keep going, but, and you want to try and get that across to a group of young children or young learners. We need to feel inspired as well, and that will always be the case for me. You know, if, you can, if something inspires me, then I'm always going to do a better job of it. So what am I talking about here? Well, I'm thinking content. It might be a book. It might be a piece of film or it might be an animation. For me, um, a really good example of something that happened for me with this is using the game Endless Ocean. This is on the Nintendo Wii. And Endless Ocean, for those of you who don't know it, is a really simple game. You're a diver and you swim and you find fish. And that's about it. That's about it. But it's so lovely and open, it's such a rich environment. And the way that we kind of play in school is we kind of maybe, we put some constraints on it, we kind of put some structure to it, but the essence of just finding things together, of just playing together and just exploring is really, really important. I felt inspired by that game, it gave me, it kind of sparked some ideas in my head, I felt inspired. And I feel that I will always do my best work when I feel that way. And this week, We've been doing this last few weeks, in fact, two last couple of weeks, we've been using Endless Ocean. Sort of, I've had an opportunity to do it again. So we've got a Nintendo Wii in our classroom, and we play it together. It's like our shared reading, you know, we do a shared text. We, we take a dive and we swim through the ocean and we talk about the kind of feelings that we would get. We talk about uh, the things that we can see. We find a fish and then we can read the information text about it. And it's the children absolutely love it. The children are super engaged. We've done other things, like we've done some information text where we have to, our instructional text, where we have to, um, we have to label a, a, a Wii remote. Have you, have you ever looked at the, the, Wii, the, the manuals to get these games? They're absolutely amazing text. Fantastic non-fiction text. 
And there's a place online where you can download the whole manual for different games. So using those sorts of things really, really switches children. And I had a boy in my class who, who barely, you know, who barely can write. Um, but for about, about two weeks now, he's been non-stop just talking and writing about the things that he knows about using the Nintendo Wii. And the language that he's using as well is fantastic because he's just switched on and he's really super engaged. And, and essentially, it comes down to this. Do you like my diagrams? Huh? I mean, they are just awesome. Look at them. You can tell I've put some time into those. <laughs> but they're simple for a reason because it's a really, really simple concept. Okay? Stuff that goes on at home, stuff that goes on at school, no. No, we keep them apart. Stuff that inspires and engages kids at home, we want to, sometimes we often say, let's keep that apart. And I'm specifically talking about gaming. I can often be a traditional kind of uh, um, a traditional belief that we need to keep those separate. And it's this space that I'm interested in, it's that space there. I remember standing with my head teacher and looking at a group of maybe 30 children in year five towards the end of the year, and they were all they all had the opportunity to bring games and stuff in at the end of the year. And met many of them have brought their Nintendo DSs in. And but then we had like two or three classes that were quite close to each other, and they were like chatting away to each other in the kind of picto chat, and they were playing games with each other, like next door, and they were collaborating and they were communicating to each other, <coughs> and they were really switched on. And we kind of suddenly thought, you know, this is, uh, this is there's something there, there's something there. This is that space there, look, you know, that's that space where we kind of bring it together. There's children that are really engaged at, 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 at home. And we're kind of like merging those two parts together, merging those two sort of um, kind of worlds together. And I think that's the sort of space I'm interested in. I'm interested in thinking about this is uh, again thinking about gaming, but you know, using the Wii in the classroom, using the DS. You know, we we kind of rolled. We had 30 Nintendo DSs in our Year Four classes, where we had you know the children could share them between the two Year Four classes, and the children were playing on Mass Trainer and things like that. And I just loved all that sort of stuff. You know, and you kind of slide a bit of stealth learning in, you know, you suddenly realise that they're actually, hang on a minute, I'm doing my touch table here. You know, and they didn't even realise. And using the Wii is, is something that's really, you know, been really, really valuable. I should have changed this actually, because one of the other things that we just we put in is using the Xbox Connect. Thursday, Thursday just gone, lunchtime, I, set, I went to the reception class in the shop, so Foundation 2, so early years, and we set up the, the Xbox Connect. In their, in their classroom. Um, anybody use the Connect and use the, the, the Connect? Does anyone see the Connect Tools game? You know, with the, the animals and. No? I'm not going to lie down on my back. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, let's say. Famous last word. It might be awful like that. But, um, so, what we did with these young kids, what we did with these, uh, this young class, is we, we set it up, and this, this teacher is an NQT, and he's completely up there. He kind of gets it. He sees that there's this world at home that we can merge together with this world at school, and we can start to engage these kids in different ways. And what we did is we set up the Connect, and, and, and we've got this game called Connectimals, where you basically your, your actions are copied by uh, an animal on screen, and this is lovely various kind of fairy creatures, um, different types of cats, I believe. And uh, the children kind of act out and do different things and interact with that, with that, with that animal. And also explore a world that they've got. And the, again, what we've got is we've got worlds in these games that are rich and are engaging and these environments we want children to be talking about. It suddenly kind of makes them start talking. And so the connector should have added it on because that's, an, you know, that's another one. It's an additional way that we can begin to engage these children in another way we can bring these two sort of worlds together. So, kind of watch that space really. I think the connect, I know somebody here, I walked in last night to the Sessie meet and there was, there was someone drawing with the connect. So, is, it Steve, is it Stephen, am I right? Where is Stephen here? Setting up. He's setting up. <laughs> and he was, you know, he was a sensor for the connect, he was drawing, he was. And it was amazing, absolutely amazing. I can imagine the potential that there is. So we've got a Connect, Xbox Connect, in our nursery, and we've got one in our Foundation 2 class, because we feel that there's, that, there's, a, there's opportunities there. There's opportunities to explore, you know? And, you know, I think it's not just home and school. It's not just home and school, it's home and work, because this happens. This happens in real life. 
And um, often what we want to try to do is to give children the opportunity, to give people the opportunity to take what inspires them into their workplace or into school. And I just want to show you a clip where I just want you to think here. I'm just going to show you a film from YouTube. I just want you to have a think about how this person has had the opportunity to merge those things that inspire him. Okay? Those things, and he's been able to bring those things that inspire him into his place of work and how that's affected him. Just have a little look at this. Okay, just, I'm just going to ask that story, okay? What we'll do is we're we'll just going to talk about um, how, how we take the game out of the console. That's another thing. I know that you're just going to watch what's going on the screen anyway. So I'll just keep talking. And, you know, and, uh, <laughs> so one thing I think is important is that we don't just... There we go. I'll come back to that. It was really good. I need a little audience participation. Otherwise, it's not going to go well at all. Those of you that have flown us before know that we do things a little bit differently in Southwest. Some of us tell jokes, some of us sleep, some of us just stand there and look beautiful. I, unfortunately, can do none of those. So here's the one thing that I do know how to do. We're going to shake things up a little bit. I need a little audience participation. Otherwise, this is not going to go over well at all. So here's what I need, especially if you got new fruit because you know what's coming. All right, I need a beat, all right? All I need you to do is stop and clap, and I'm going to do the rest because I just, I've had five fights today, and I just cannot do the regular boring announcement again. Otherwise, I'm going to put myself to sleep. So, you guys with me? All right, so give me a stomp, clap, stomp, clap. Come on, stomp, clap, stomp. So the question is, is, is how, how do we encourage children to, uh, how do we encourage children, what sort of environments do we create for children that allows them that freedom? That person, that's not just by accident. You know, that company leads the, you know, America in terms of its customer relations. It's like always voted the top. And that's no accident. And I think it's important for us to kind of, what can we learn from that? Or well, how can we encourage children to bring what inspires them into the classroom? Because that person there has clearly brought what inspires him into his place of work. And I tell you what, he's probably doing a much better job of it. So I'm going to press on. And um, the next thing I want to talk to you really about is um, this whole idea of mosaic. And you know, that's a kind of like a motif a little bit for what um, 
I've been sort of saying so far. I'm just going to skip over. This picture here is really important. And what I'm going to talk about now is how we as a group are uh, sitting here today. We are a mini network. We, we can do something today. We could create something if we wanted to. Okay? I've been, um, it doesn't come out quite so well on there. There's lots of lovely colors. Not all just black, by the way. It looks nice on my screen. But um, the, the whole idea here is that this picture really resonated again with me because I, I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to be in a position where I can, I, I've been working with communities of teachers using social media, mainly through blogs and through Twitter, and we've been creating content, creating resources that teachers can use. And this mosaic, this idea of a mosaic, is about every one of you having the opportunity to make one small contribution. And that whole that we create is actually much, much more valuable than just those individual parts. And this picture really, really is important because it's not everything's perfect. Everybody comes at it at a different angle. They have different colours, they have different shapes. They've got different tones and styles to what they do. But if we all can come together to kind of add one idea, and, and this is what uh, I've been doing over the last four years now. I've been talking about, um, I'm just going to switch here to full screen, if you can see it a little bit better. So the interesting ways, are those people that have come across these interesting ways, presentations. Um, what they basically are, for those people that have them, is a Google presentation, so I can share that with everybody. Anybody can edit it. And the whole concept here is that you add one idea, and you do it just on one slide. And this is this kind of really low kind of expectation. Here's my mosaic bit, because that's the contribution. You're always going to see this in the bottom corner. I'm going to talk about some other projects as well. Interesting ways then. It's been running for four years now. And this is all the stuff that we kind of do outside of our normal time in the classroom. There's over, well, nearly a thousand ideas across a whole range of technology and non-technology subjects that have been created. And all it is, is it's like one presentation and they always start at zero. This is the first presentation I did in November 2007. I put a, a, made a document and just wrote one interesting way to use an interactive whiteboard in the classroom. And I kind of wrote about it, I put it on my blog, and it was slightly embarrassed, I only had one idea on there, but I knew that this idea might catch on. And the whole sense that you then, your experience of, um, uh, of using an interactive whiteboard, which is quite narrow, it's quite focused, all you have to do is go, oh yeah, yeah, I had a good idea for my mental starter, or for my plea with my session the other day, or I used a really good idea, or someone told me a good tip, and you just add one idea, use it one slide, one image, and that basically has built up over the last four years, and now it's 52 interesting ways, currently, as we speak. Who knows, somebody might be editing it now. And those aren't my ideas. I might have got four or five on there, but then everybody across the world has seen this open document, and they've added those ideas on. And literally hundreds of teachers have edited these, these documents. And so there's currently about 50 presentations like this, you know, across a massive range of different things. There's my blog address. If you go there, you'll see interesting ways at the top, and then you get a full list of all of the different things. Now, the good thing about these is that we license them with using Creative Commons. And Creative Commons is a way for us to license our work. And basically, that means that nobody can use it for a commercial kind of uh, enterprise, can't use it for that. You've got to share it in the same way that it's been shared with you. And also, you've got to give attribution. So you've got to say, this is where I found it. This is who's using it. Now, that actually was challenged just recently, because what happened is an Australian company took a presentation like this, and in fact it was the iPad one, uh, which kind of was built quite quickly, and that's up to like 37 interesting ways to use the iPad. And they took it, and they basically took all our, all our stuff off it, all our names off it, because every slide's got like, somebody's name on it, because they kind of said, that's my idea, they put their name at the bottom, that's great, that's their attribution. And what they did, they just basically cleaned that all up. So they put their company logo on it, and they sort of dished it out of their events. And that really, really bugged me, but they didn't realise that somebody in the audience of that first event was in my Twitter network, and within a space about 30 seconds from going, oh, here's your hand up for today, that person went, hang on a minute, I know that, and they just went, Ch -ch 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 Tom, and then in that moment I kind of woke up, had my breakfast, quick look on Twitter, and Richard Anderson, an assistant principal in a school in Australia, had been sitting in that session, and he told me. So in which, as the session was running, I was already speaking to the MD on email. 
And basically, what happened... <laughs> it was a great dialogue. What happened? what happened, basically, I just said, that is not good enough. We, we have spent, as a group of people, as teachers, we have spent four years developing this ethos of sharing, building these resources, making them quality, making them part of what we do, and making it real as well. These are, look at that, 52 interesting ways. That's not some perfect multiple of 10. It's not that there's a great list of 100 perfect ideas that one group is going to dish out and you're going to solve all of your interactive whiteboard work woes. It's not like that. These are real ideas from real people who are passionate about their, su their subject. And I was really upset about it. I was really upset. Because I just felt that, you know, that's just, a, that's just not on. So I basically said, uh, I, I just wrote a blog post. And in fact, actually, I wrote an email first. I sent that to the, 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 uh, the managing director. And I said at the bottom of the email, I'm going to publish this on my blog. And I put it on my blog. And I got other people to kind of get going with it, to add their comments, and to voice their anger, and shout, and get some pitchforks ready, and the whole thing. And basically, what happened was, you know, they, they just removed all the content. They just removed it all. They didn't use it at all in the rest of their workshops. And that kind of, I suppose, also is just important for us to remember that, you know, we need to protect these ideas. These ideas are important. We want to share them. That's important for us to remember as well. We want it to be open, but we must make sure we protect them because some people will just jump on the bandwagon and take them for their own use. And that's sadly what happened. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Interesting ways is something to have a look at. Definitely. Another couple of projects I've done to do with collaboration, to do with us as a crowd creating something together. Um, this one here is Maths Maps. Now, Maths Maps is using Google Maps, and this started with me thinking about using Google Earth and looking down on the Earth and I'm playing around with it, and I thought there's loads of maps that you can see um, from, the, from, you know, from space. There's loads of maps, and the only problem with it with Google Earth is that you can't really share it with someone. But Google Maps kind of came along and did a, an amazing job of allowing me to make a map and then to share it with everybody. And then you can all add to that map as well. And so our mosaic event, our little piece of our bigger picture, what can we do? We can add one place mark, we can add one mass activity. That's all I want you to do. I don't, it doesn't need to be some grand thing, that's all I want you to do. So go on the map and have a little think about, you know, what maths can you see? And this is an example of what I've written. This is a, um, the garden in Luxembourg in, in Paris. And this is on the shapes in Paris one, and, and, and I basically attach a place mark to this shape I can see, and then just give the kids a couple of questions. And the kids might go to that, uh, and then, you know, we have different we have different colours for different age groups and things like that. All of that sort of stuff's kind of worked out, it works out between that group. So Maths Maps is another really, really useful kind of uh, a useful kind of iteration really of the whole idea of crowdsourcing content. A couple of others. Curriculum Catalyst, you might not have heard of this one. This, is, this has been sort of ticking on for a while, but here you go, mosaic, bottom left-hand corner. What can I add? I can add a topic idea, I can add an activity idea. And we use this to using something called Google Moderator and using a Google Doc here. And basically this is people just adding their ideas into a shared place where we can actually then use it. Again, you know, all of this is on, on my blog as well, so make sure you have a little look. Okay, so I'm gonna just move on to um, another one. There's another one, Shared Search, which we use. We, this is another one where I can actually create a, a custom search engine. So rather than just giving children google.com to use, I can actually use Google to create my own type of search engine. And this one is topic related, so to do with sea life. And so far on that one, there's 23 teachers in the world who've added a website that they think would be relevant to my sea life topic. And I just send my children to this, and I know that I've got 92 websites that teachers have vetted and said, yeah, that's really, really useful. I've used it with my class. It's, 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 you know, it's a good text. And we act here as a first filter. This can be really good in certain times. I'm not saying that it should be the only way that we use it, but you know, go to custom search engines. It's a brilliant little tool. You can make your own. You can embed them in your school website. You know, if you've got a blog or something, then you could, you know, you could have little topic kind of search engines for your topics, for your courses, anything really. So what you have to do here for Mosaic is to add one website, just one website. That's all you have to do. Okay, here's a couple of other examples. This one is something I've just started recently called Sentence Starters, and all I wanted to do here was create something to do with writing and literacy and this is a screenshot of a Google Doc, 
And all I asked people to do was to write a sentence starter. And it gave them a topic around to talk about. And uh, this one was, uh, this one was to do with, I think, decisions. So we just did something to do with decisions. And, two, and people have been adding sentence starters to this. Just a, and there's up to about 80 different sentence starters that you could use in the classroom. Again, a group acting together, make one small contribution, leads to a much greater whole. And this one, in fact, what happened with some children in Birmingham, Robin Hood's primary school in Birmingham, they actually did it with their classes and they got their children to add ideas into it as well. So this is actually a sentence starter to do with trees. That's our topic for this one. And they're just adding, this is a child in a, in a class, they've added their own ideas to it. Okay, here's a quick one then. I know I haven't got much time, but this is what we're going to do. Post-it note. How does a post-it note? The post-it note that you've been given, that's really tiny. That's really small. There's a small space. That's an easy, that's an easy little space to write in. If you ever give children the chance to write on post-it notes, they love it. There's not a great big page to fill. Okay? So if you haven't got a post-it note, then now's the time to get one. But what I'd like you to do now is this. We, as a group, we're going to create something. Okay? We're going to make something. All we have to do is we're going to write one idea on the post-it note. One idea. Okay? Let's make it something to do with uh, let's make it something to do with technology. Okay? Is that our theme? If you want to stick to something that's you know something like subject-based, that's fine. So technology writing or technology maths or whatever. But what I'd like you to do now is to write just one idea on there. It doesn't have to be much. It could be a keyboard shortcut. You know? It could be whatever. I don't mind. I'd like you all to do that, because what we can do then together is we're going to get them all together. You're going to give them to me, and I'm going to be fascinated in place and What you're going to do is we're going to take them all, we're going to create something from it. And I'll create a, 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 a PowerPoint or a Google Doc or whatever, and I'll put them all together, and I'll go back to you. And you'll not only have one, but you'll have you know, hundreds of ideas that you could use. Because that's the key thing, isn't it? If I write one idea, if I've got one idea, it's not just keeping it to myself, or just giving it to one person, can we have we've got the opportunity with the technology to give it to everybody? Okay, time is starting. I, did, I was going to get that cat down here to go and, and say, so I might have to do it myself with my arm and stuff. But, um, so you've got, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute. You just write down for one idea. If you can't, that's fine, right? Hopefully, by the end of the conference, you'll have stacks of ideas. Come on, right, okay, move on. Finish writing yours up, and I'm not being able to do when we finish. So if you just want to come and pop it at the front here, we'll just have all, I'll just put them all in, and I'll uh, we'll go away and we'll sort all this out. Because what we've just done there is as a community, as a group, we've made a small, tiny contribution. Okay? And you know, you could keep that, we could give it to one person, but it's much, much better if we share it with everybody. And that's what we'll do. We'll take that product and we'll share it with everybody. Okay, there's a couple of kind of things to finish on. Oh, we got two already. Oh, come on, people, sit down, lady. Right. A couple of things that we can learn from this is just bring it back. We've got the sense of community, the sense of sharing, okay? Why is this important? Because we're making tiny gestures of openness, okay? I'm willing to share an idea, it's a tiny gesture. And that gesture isn't daunting, okay? It's not a daunting idea. So for your staff, think back at your school. Could you provide a framework or a simple thing for your staff at your school to share simple ideas? Give your staff the opportunity to do that. Can we encourage people to generate this sort of shit? Ah, hang on a minute, come on. Right, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> I'm the back of the alright? You better get yourself sorted in all cars. Come on. You don't want to get a stare. <laughs> I was only doing it yesterday. <laughs> Okay, so let's just let's just finish off. Here we go. That's all we got. No matter what you say, is it? It's always one. Okay, this is this is important. We think about taking this back to school. These projects they're great. They happen. But what can we do, you know, with our staff every day, uh, every week, with our staff? Well, think about those tiny contributions. 
you know, really lower everything down so it's a small contribution and build on it. You know, build that tiny piece, make a mosaic, make something that's bigger, but give everybody the opportunity to be successful. And I think that's really important. And we don't have massively high expectations that we know sometimes we're going to fail. Encourage sharing ethos in your school. Encourage that ethos, that's really important. And can we actually learn from the process? There's so many teachers that have said to me, Tom, I, I've, got, I've got a great idea to write my touches, but I haven't got a clue how to add to your presentation. And then I'll be like, okay, well, I can help you out. I can be, you know, this is how you do it, this is how you do it. And that person has not only contributed to the whole, they've not only put a post-it note into a group, but they've learned from the process. You've learned how to write on a post-it note. Well done, everybody. <laughs> but the whole act of adding something to a whole, adding to a, a Google Doc, they've learned how to use Google Docs. And maybe they'll take that away as another idea. They'll say, oh yeah, I know how to use Google Docs and share it with a group. I know how to make one small contribution. I've done that with my classes. One slide, one idea, one part of the topic. We're all working on it together. What have we made together? That's something that's important. As a group, as a staff, when you go back to your schools and you say, here's the way I want you to add something, what can we make together that you can return back to them? And I'm just going to finish with this picture. Coming back to our mosaic. You know, what mosaic do you start? Which piece is going to be yours? And I hope that you can sort of take away some good ideas from today and, uh, and start building your pieces of artwork. <coughs> Thank you for listening. Uh, hope you enjoy the conference. Well, thank you very, very much for that. You've just pushed back the walls of my classroom and made the entire world my classroom with a way into it with the idea of one little thing that I can do and that I can then be part of a whole, not only giving, but receiving greatly. And thank you so much for that, Tom. I'll definitely try not to be distracted by the squirrel. And Tom made a comment earlier on, if I get it here now, you will get my best when I feel inspired too. Well, I am feeling very inspired at the moment, and I'm sure you'd like to join with me in showing your appreciation of your ins inspiredness, if there's such a word now to Tom. Thank you so much. And I don't think I can pass to say that Tom said that he was in his classroom all day yesterday, arrived late last night. He is also on the plane very shortly. He isn't even going to have the benefit of our conference. And I really do appreciate that he has taken that precious time out of his life and his living from his family as well to be with us here. And at this moment in time, we've caught up slightly. Thank you very much, Tom. And we have approximately 25 minutes now for people to have their coffees before the sessions begin. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.